Well, here we are for another edition of TBK Tries Walking. But this time we're going to be walking at a different location here in Bahrain uh, at a place called Al Najma Club, which is uh, near to Jafar. We'll be going to see the Grand Mosque. We'll be seeing some new building work that has taken place. We'll be seeing the infamous Babco bus shelters. And we're also going to see where I live, but from a different view. We're actually on the other side of the bay. So I'm going to get out of the car because it's getting hot. I don't have the AC on. And uh, I think it's about 23 degrees here in Bahrain. You can see my glasses are going uh, dark colored because they're photochromatic from the sun uh, and uh, I'll uh, show you uh, what it looks like outside and then we're going to go for a little walk. Speak to you in a moment. So here we are outside the car and this is the Jafer skyline which you can see uh, from where I live in uh, Hid and then as you come around here you'll see the uh, bridge. This is the third bridge that goes between Manama and Maharak and then you will see uh, various cars come and uh, park here and play their music very loudly. This is the building that I reckon is going to uh, fall into the sea uh, because it's very badly um, shored up, you know, underneath they've uh, taken away a lot of the uh, land because it's on reclaimed land. Uh, you can see the tower as well, uh, which is the park. Uh, there are, of course, uh, motorboats. Uh, and uh, there were some jet skis earlier on uh, and some dows actually coming back, the fishing dows. Um, so uh, this is a you know popular uh, area. And then this is the uh, end of the Manama skyline. So here you can see the Bahrain train towers, trade towers, sorry. Uh, the H of the uh, Four Seasons Hotel is over here. Uh, the Wyndham uh, Grand hotel is there that's the curb building oops sorry it was focusing on my finger uh, and then there's a whole load of uh, food trucks uh, across here and then the spotlights that you can see in the distance are the Al Najma club which is a football club you can tell what this place is used for at night time from the burnt uh, embers and the uh, beer cans and um, this is the kind of place where uh, the younger people come and sit watch the sunset go down drink beer which obviously is here in Bahrain as a Muslim country and uh, have a little uh, barbecue. I just want to show you this block of flats here uh, as we're walking over. This is called Fontana Infinity uh, and uh, it's a huge uh, new block of flats. If I just bring the camera back you can see it uh, and this is probably one of the most expensive uh, blocks of flats in uh, Bahrain currently. So one of the great things here in Bahrain, just like in Dubai, they have a lot of walking uh, places. So here we have a cycle lane on this side, uh, going one way and going the other way. Of course, everyone ignores that. And then on this side is the walking track. And on the right is the Al Najma Club. And then down here, there's a whole series of restaurants. On the left, Fontana Infinity, which goes all the way up there. Big, huh? So this is an incredibly lucrative uh, row of shops and uh, restaurants here and there's new ones opening all the time and also the ones that are here are expanding. Excuse the noisy cement lorry behind me. So Jasmine's used to be just over here on the left, now they have a garden over here on the right and behind here there's a go-karting uh, track at the Al Najma Club and also you can see the floodlights for the Al Najma Club quite often at night they're uh, doing football training there. There is of course a drive through here because uh, people are too lazy to get out their cars and also this Jasmine is I think uh, 24 hours a day if I remember rightly uh, so you can go and get coffee um, because people can't turn on a kettle here in Bahrain and uh, make a cup of coffee they have to come to a drive through or have it delivered by uh, Talabat uh, or one of the other delivery companies next to here is Basta Basta used to be in Riffa Palms and it's a traditional Arabic restaurant kind of street food type place and uh, they closed the one in Riffle Palms because they didn't get enough customers and because the rent was too high. And uh, now they have got this one here in... Uh, uh. So this is Burgers and Fries down under. Next to that is Coming Soon. Problem here is the rent's very high. It is a very fast turnover place. Uh, good uh, business, but uh, 
people don't stay here long. Next to that is uh, Thailand Gate. This is the supermarket. Kitiki used to bring me here buying uh, Thai food when we were making uh, food at home. The problem is they don't speak very good English and I don't speak very good Thai. But you know, with uh, Google Translate and some uh, pictures, we managed to uh, get around that. All of the restaurants here have a sign on the door saying toilets are for customers only. And with that owner sitting outside, I didn't think I was going to get in. And I said, can I use your toilet? And he said, no, it's for customers only. So I pulled down my face mask and I went, I am a regular customer. He went, oh yeah, okay. So opening soon is another restaurant here uh, called Medici Ahmed. Uh, and you can see they've just got all the boxes inside, they're moving in. Next here is Big Muscle, where I'll be going one day to get uh, tablets to make me big and strong. And then next to that is another place, uh, Spa and Barber. Next to the Barbers, which is opening up soon, is Mohammed Noor. When I was last here two months ago, this was the end of the row, Wingman, where they serve wings. Uh, and then there's a pharmacy here, and then there's a drive through uh, which is for Starbucks. Uh, for those that uh, don't like uh, Jasmine's coffee, you can have Starbucks coffee. This is open 24 hours a day, uh, and as I say, drive through so you don't even have to get out of your car. So this is the other side of Fontana Infinity and uh, Somerset, and uh, my friend in Somerset was telling me that they were going to be building some more shops along here. So here we are, the latest of the new buildings to open up, and let me see, we've got McDonald's, my cafe, we've got Jasmine's, Jasmine's Cafe, we've got Starbucks, Starbucks Coffee, and just in case that wasn't enough choice for the people of Bahrain, there's also now Caribou Coffee, uh, which is open also 24 hours, uh, and uh, it's incredible, isn't it? The coffee market is huge and dynamic here in Bahrain. So now we're going to start heading down uh, towards those wonderful landmark buildings. In case you're familiar with Bahrain and want to get your bearings, to fair is off to the left and the Grand Mosque we're going to see in a minute. And then straight ahead we'll take you to Manama, the airport uh, in Maharak and also uh, the King's Pied Causeway, which is signposted everywhere because that's the link between Bahrain and Saudi. In the last two months since I've been away, they've widened this uh, cycle track and walking track. It's now a four lane, two lanes going each way for cycling two lanes going each way for walking uh, and we've now done 400 meters uh, from where we started by the Al Najma Club. Again this is another sign of the changing uh, face of Bahrain. Uh, two months ago when I went away this was an empty uh, culvert which went right the way down to the sea over there. They've now blocked it off and put some uh, uh, drains uh, underneath uh, so that the building uh, drivers can get in and out over there where we've just been and this uh, wonderful building that they're going to create here and it is a fantastic location because it's right by the sea and you can see the uh, Bahrain Towers behind the Four Seasons Hotel. Uh, it's going to be the National Assembly. Uh, uh, they've been building bus stops all over Bahrain uh, with Babco on. Babco is an oil refinery, obviously it's not a bus service. Uh, and it's you know been a bit of a mystery. Um, it does have uh, the social media uh, on here, so if you want to follow Babco, uh, you can do so. Uh, this is to inform the public about the Babco modernization uh, program. Uh, and this is the biggest uh, project in the history of uh, Bahrain. Uh, and uh, they've done a lot of work to uh, make sure that the site doesn't damage the local environment. These bus stops are solar powered. Uh, they were supposed to have some sockets so you could charge your phone, but um, they appear to have disappeared. And uh, I think you'll find about 20 of these all over the Kingdom of Bahrain. So we walked 500 meters now. We can now hear the, the call to prayer. Uh, the time now is three o'clock. So this is the third call to prayer in the day. The
Barry, my fitness instructor in Dubai, would love this bit. Uh, what do they call it? That kind of, uh, you know, outside gym uh, where people can uh, do pull-ups and swing around on the bars. And the area kind of straight in front of us down there, you can just see in the background, that's Gurabir and Hora. And that's where all the Filipinos live and some Bangladeshis and other expats. And they're like really squashed in over there. Um, and this area is completely open and it's by the sea. So they love coming down here to get out of the houses and, and get a bit of fresh air. So we walked 700 meters now, which is pretty good. We'll check the numbers of steps once we get to the end. And uh, they've also extended this path. It used to just run from Al Najma to Jupiter, uh, but now there's another path that runs from Jupiter to Coral Bay, which is right down there. And uh, they've linked the two paths up together. So if you walk the whole length of both paths, that's probably five or six uh, kilometers that you'd be uh, walking. I'd also like to draw your attention to the beautification process in Bahrain. Um, because they've extended this path and made it bigger, they've also put trees and plants all the way along here. Another of the interesting features along here is these bins. Uh, and you'll see these all over Bahrain. And they're quite unique really because they're very small and tiny. You can't get much rubbish into it. Uh, no one has the key to open it and uh, Bahrainers don't put their rubbish in the bin ever so they're kind of like a antique item maybe a bit of a you know humorous talking point I wonder what that thing is for on the pole they also have these concrete benches which I can assure you are very uncomfortable so here we reach the 900 meters mark and here's our third lap per bus stop still no buses and uh, over here is the Grand Mosque I'm just going to put a little warning for Chester in here because I know he edits these videos at night and I know he has headphones on um, because he uses his brother's computer while his brother's asleep and in a second this pile driver over here Chester is going to make a hell of a noise Here's another scheme they have in Bahrain See, I did warn you So this is the Al Fata Cornish, uh, not correctly spelt, but then I did make a spelling mistake in my ebook, as my brother will tell you. Uh, and here's the latest scheme they have in Bahrain to get everyone fit. Uh, they have electronic bicycles that you can rent. Okay, so we're 1,400 meters now. We turn the corner, and we're coming down to the next uh, sign. Um, so, one of the reasons they have put these here, I learned a while back, there's a mosque in Riffa where the royal family goes, and a couple, well no, more than a couple of years now, back in 2011, the Arab Spring here in Bahrain, um, there was a car that came too close to the mosque and it had a bomb in it. Uh, luckily no one was killed, uh, but it did a lot of damage. Uh, coming up here at the 1,500 meter mark. Uh, let's have a look for the buses. Uh, don't think so. 